We have a lot of oneness Pentecostals here. <laughs> one up. <laughs> I told us the only time they can stop being oneness is during offering. You can be fiveness, you can be twentyness. You are tenness? All right, we love that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, once again, I want to welcome Brother Charlie Stockton. He is going to be working in the area. He goes to a church in Albuquerque that I've actually preached in before, which is kind of fun. Uh, it was years and years ago. It must have been eight years ago, maybe even more. Uh, but it's good to have you welcome, and uh, we just love to have you while you're here. Praise the Lord. Somebody say one. One. I think that's my, I mean, I have a favorite number. My favorite number is usually seven because it's God's favorite number. And then I like 15 for some reason. I like, I like multiples of five. Don't know why. But I also like 45 because that was my football number. But I think my new favorite number, it's been coming really uh, uh, powerfully in my life. I think my new favorite number is one. I really do. Uh, when God chooses that number to describe himself and we know that that is the most accurate number to describe the nature of God I believe that it is becoming something that we need to consider important there are too many that want to make God a multiplicity of gods or to to spread or divide him up uh, but I'm looking to have one God that's it that's all I want. That's all I need is one God. My God is enough. My God can provide all my needs. I don't need many gods or several gods. I just need one God and I will be okay. Especially when that God is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Tonight we are going to speak on the subject of one body. One body. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. Yesterday... We preached, or we had a Bible study on the gifts of the Spirit. And it's interesting, the more I read my Bible, the more the Lord gives, I mean, sometimes it just takes one passage for the Lord to give me all kinds of sermons to, to provide for the church. One of the things I'm grateful for is when I read the Scripture, I begin to see things for the church immediately as I read things or when I hear things. Uh, the Lord shows me stuff that I need to share with you. If I didn't have that, if that didn't come to me, then I would feel like I don't have this calling to be a pastor and I'd be in trouble. But I'm grateful that it comes so easy that Lord, as soon as I begin to read the word, I'm like, I need to share that. Hey Amen, I need to share that. That's a nice shirt, son. You see it? Is that the same shirt we got? just got as or Jacob? Nice shirt. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you, sister. Praise God. I just want to welcome Sister Shauna back to church again. I'm just so excited to see you. Praise the Lord. We are just praying for you and loving you. God has a way. Can I get amen? Oh, he's a good God. Our Wednesdays are becoming awesome. We have about 60 people here right now. And, you know, we got to a point where our Wednesdays were about down to about 20. And, uh, and I felt like we needed to make some changes to get that to a different level. And I think we're getting there and I'm very excited. Uh, we have about 70 on weekend Sundays and we're on about 50 or 60 on Wednesdays and that's how it used to be and that's what we need to do is continue to grow from there can I get amen, amen. praise God first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 reads as follows for by one spirit somebody say one. one for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body somebody say one, one. whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have all Made to drink into one spirit. Somebody say one again. Wow. Praise God. Let's pray. Jesus, oh, we are so grateful for your word. I just begin to think for a moment where I would be without your word. And I become anxious because I know without your word, I'm in big trouble, God. Let us, by your word, understand you better tonight. Let us become more intimate with you. More understanding of your goals and your desires for us. And let us obey and follow that word in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's clap on to the Lord. He's good. He is good. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. You know, you know, the kids love to praise God. It comes so easy for them. <laughs> they just get excited. My son's been praising God since he was one. He started raising his hands and getting excited about God. Praise the Lord. I want you to know as I was watching 
the offering march and and seeing that we have a guest and seeing kind of the church through his eyes. Man, this is a beautiful church. You guys are some beautiful people. I'm, I'm so excited to be your pastor. I'm excited for all of the, the friendliness and the smiles that we have here. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just glad that we're here. Somebody just give yourselves, you know, a, a hand clap of praise for being a wonderful church. It's funny how that happens. When someone else comes in, all of a sudden you begin to see things a little differently. And so, uh, as, as the pastor, I'm going to give you some things that are going to help you understand who we are. I, I didn't just say that because I wanted to flatter you, but, but this is about the body. We're going to talk about the body, and there's only one body. It's interesting how the, the, the scripture tells us to avoid denominationalism. Because there's not a bunch of denominations when it comes to God. There is one God and one body. That's it. And so today we're going to look at what the scripture describes about that body and what that means to you and what it is in relation to you. First, let's look at this first scripture. It says that we are baptized into one body. And then it talks about the difference between Jews and Gentiles. Who can tell me what a Gentile is? See, before I came to church, I didn't know what that was. I wasn't raised in church. Yes. Just people that are not Jewish. That's all that is. So is anybody Jewish in here? You're part Jewish? She's like, <laughs> Navajo Jewish, okay. <laughs> a Jewish Navajo. I, I've never heard of that. Praise the Lord. I don't think that anybody here is Jewish, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But that just means that we are all Gentiles. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to be Jewish to be a partaker of God's uh, glory and His blessing and His salvation because that was before. That was in the beginning where the Jews were the chosen people. Well, guess what? Someone say, I'm chosen. Because now you are a part of God's chosen people. If you are in his body, then you are chosen of him because the Gentiles were given an opportunity to be in God. Now what was, what was one of the reasons, this is Wednesday so we're going to have to have fun and relax. What was one of the reasons why God gave an opportunity for the Gentiles to be saved? I mean there's a, probably a couple answers but there's one specifically I'm thinking about. I don't let her answer much because she knows a lot. Yeah. Because they just wouldn't follow God. He said he's going to make them jealous. And it's funny because we have a jealous God. Our God does not want to share us with any false gods or with anything that's going to come before him. And, and he was going to make them jealous because they would not follow the Lord. You know that's not, that's not a reputation I want to have. That's not a reputation that I want to earn and I want to make sure that that's not how God sees me. I often try to get you to recognize and just think for a moment. I remember one time I had everybody close their eyes and just think. I want you to see yourself not as you see you but as God sees you. Because see, we rationalize, justify, and all these things, things that we're doing in our lives. But God, he sees us for who we are. And so sometimes we want to uh, have a facade that we present before God, and God sees differently. I think we need to be careful to make sure we, you know, the Bible says we're all right in our own eyes. But we've got, we've got to be, or desire to be right in God's eyes. Does anybody want to be right in God's eyes? Yeah. Anybody want to hear those wonderful words? Well done. My good and faithful servant. See, the people who are not good and faithful, they're not going to hear well done. People who are just, see, people want to hear that. But are we willing to do what it takes to hear him say those words to us? That is the challenge because our flesh is going to fight tooth and nail for us not to hear those words. So we have to be willing to fight. It goes on to say, whether bond or free, and have made all to drink into one spirit. There are people here who are in bondage. Just because you're in church does not mean you're free. And there are people here who are free. That's one of our theme songs. We haven't done it. We need to do that pretty soon. Anybody like that song, Freedom? 
Oh, I love that song. We always go crazy when we do it. And, and we're, we're good about it. We don't do it every week to kill the song. We do it, you know, a couple times a year. But man, it's a good song. Because see, it feels good to be free. And when we're free, we have an opportunity to be a part of that body. If you're in bondage, you still have an opportunity to be a part of that body. But what must you do? First and foremost... Yes, Gabriel. Cool. Look at that. Y'all, I'm telling you, y'all better, he's beating a lot of y'all. Y'all better catch up to Gabriel. But Gabriel, you keep letting your shoes because you get all fired up when I, when I blow you up. But it's still exciting. The young man is how old? 11? 11 years old. Willing to answer all the questions. You know why some of us don't want to answer the question? Because we're afraid to get the answer wrong. You know why we're afraid to get the answer wrong? Because we're not we're not what? We're not reading our Bibles. If you notice, I told you that I'm never going to stop putting these out until Jesus comes. We had some weddings and stuff and things got put around and moved around. But guess what? They're back. Reading plans. It gives you the opportunity to read the Bible in one year and you can keep track of how much you're reading and praying. Here is your prayer chart. Gives you the ability to keep track of how much you're praying. Is that something we should do? You know what, what you keep track of is going to be something. What would happen if you don't keep track of your money? You don't keep track of your finances. You won't know what's happening with your money. The same thing happens with our prayer and our reading. If we go down to verse 14, and we're going to stay in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 for the rest of the evening, so you can just follow right along. We're going to go on to uh, verse four, 14, I'm sorry. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Verse 16, and if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would hearing take place, or where would the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? God is giving us a description and an understanding that there is one body, but that one body has many parts. If you take a look at your, your, your physical body right now, do you know how many cells your body has? There's millions, if not billions of cells that make up one body. There is, there is so much, can you imagine trying to count the hairs on your head? Well, for me, that'd be pretty easy. But think about how many hairs, there's, your body is made up of so many parts. If you, if you break it down to organs, you get a little bit smaller numbers. You have, you know, large intestine, small intestine, lungs, pancreas, heart, right? But you've got all these different parts. Now, we've been preaching about service. And about building a church. Right now we have a foundation that we're building on. But that's exactly what it is. A foundation. We're not, we haven't arrived. We're not there yet. We have got a place to prepare for the lost to come. And find Jesus Christ. Find redemption. Find a place for their soul to be saved. And then it's time to find a place for them to be a part of the body. Now being a part of the body is not just... Take it. Come on, are you ready? Here, I'm getting ready to preach. Being a part of the body in terms of this church is not about taking up a seat. It's not about sitting in a pew. You could be sitting in a pew and not be a part of the body. Being part of the body is about joining in and participation in the body. Now this says here, you know, if, if I say I'm the, uh, the foot... If the foot say, I'm not the hand and I'm not the body, you, you got to understand, people have different positions in the church. Now let's talk about the larger body and then we'll talk about the smaller body. What is, in your, in your understanding, I'll let you answer this one, Sister Y. What is the body as a whole when it comes to Jesus? And what is the church? 
Okay, so all of us are the church. Man, this is going to be a this is going to be a, sm a lot of room in heaven. Yes. Yes, but what is the body? Yes, Gabriel. Okay, you got you guys. <laughs> what is the church? What is the body? Yes. Baby, you know? Oh, you you're stuck with him. Yeah, we've got to be careful because see, as an apostolic person, we are different than the majority of the churches that we, are, we encounter. So when we go to people and, and we describe them truth and we talk about Acts 2.38, we show them that there is a modernized Christianity that, that we have to separate from. The first thing they generally say, and I know this because I've done this with a lot of people, I witness to a lot of people. What they generally say is, oh, so you think you're the only one saved? And they'll say, oh, so you think your church is the only ones going to heaven. So if, we, if we're not careful, we say the church is the body. We've got to be more specific because, see, it's not just the church or the church building. It's the people that inhabit the church, but not just this church. But every church that's teaching truth is the body. Every church that's teaching the Acts 2.38 salvation message and there will be several churches that have different variations of, of standards and how they fit into that concept. But the Acts 2.38 message of how to repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Ghost, that is the body. That's why we love traveling and I love taking this church to camp meeting. We're, we're part of ALJC right now. We, we, we're independent but we fellowship with different groups and, that are apostolic. But there's a reason why I take you to Phoenix uh, to Brother Bibb's church, which is UPC, or ALJC in, in Texas. Because what I want you to know is that the body is not just this building or the people in it, but it's anybody who was involved in the apostolic faith. So I take you to see those other people. I, and, I, and I encourage any, raise your hand if you have not ever been to a camp meeting or to a youth rally or to something uh, that has to do with uh, our apostolic friends elsewhere. Raise your hand if you've never been. Ooh, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you because there is something about going to another place and being part of the body in that place. Because guess what? When we go to Brother, um, what, what's church? What's the Lubbock Church's pastor's name, babe? Brother Bostic. When we go to Brother Bostic's church. We find ourselves in the body all over again with a bunch of people we don't even know. And it is awesome to, to recognize, you know what we're really doing is we're seeing that we have a hand here in Gallup and there's several other body parts but we go to another place and we meet our foot or we meet our leg or we meet our arm in another place. We find out that it is bigger than here. From my estimation, and I'm just estimating, there's about 50 different organizations that are apostolic. And in that 50 organizations, there's thousands of churches. And I'm just estimating again because these numbers actually change quite often because people are getting uh, saved all the time or people are being transformed. But I would say there's about somewhere in the realm of, I don't know, in this country maybe 50 maybe 70 million with all these 50 organizations with the thousands of the churches. Remember when we hear what the scripture tells us that the way to destruction is broad and the way to the light is narrow. So we know, we talked about this not too long ago, we know that there's 7 million people or 7 billion people on the planet right now and it says, few there be that find it when it comes, in this Matthew chapter 7, when it comes to salvation or comes to the truth. So we know that if half of the people in the world would be about 3.5 billion people, it's got to be less than that because half is not few. So we are, we're looking at millions of people who are saved. Millions. So the body is not just this city or just this church it is the millions of people you know it's interesting when you find out that you're not so small after all that you are a part of a larger body that has power that is anointed that is a part of 
or consists of being involved with Jesus Christ. It goes on to say that the body has different parts that do different things. This is where the church comes in individually. I can't do certain things. I don't have, I, you know what, I just learned something very interesting. For years I have talked about how, you know, I don't have a lot of calluses on my hand. I, I went to college and, and I learned uh, how to do things in terms of psychology and, and I have a master's in counseling and all the work that I do doesn't involve my hands and, I, and I've been making jokes about, except for the all, all, only callus I have is that one from driving. You know what I just learned? That callus isn't from driving. That callus is from the ring on my finger. I had a friend of mine who uh, I coached football and, and one of the guys who was helping us out, who, who's part owner of one of the uh, car dealers here, showed me his hands and he said, I don't work very much either, you know, uh, I'm a car dealer. And he, he said, except for this callus right here from my ring. And I said, I got one of those, but mine's from driving. He goes, no, bro, that's from your ring. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. It's crazy how that happens, isn't it? But I want you to know that there are certain things I cannot do. There's, there's so much that, that's been done in this church that's not been done by me. M my job is to preach. My job is to pray. My job is to teach Bible studies. My job is to win souls. My job is to develop a church foundation. I don't really know how to do much about tile. I have, think I helped my dad once lay some tile. But see, what God does is he sends people. I was just telling uh, the story the other day of how the guy who uh, ended up being someone who stole a great deal of value, something of great deal of value from my property and, and the Lord told me not to get him arrested. And I didn't have any proof that he took it, but I was, I'm generally pretty, when, I was pretty angry about it. And I would generally do whatever I could to make that person pay the price for what they had done to me. But the Lord told me, don't do anything to this man. Ended up coming to this church, getting repented, baptized, full of the Holy Ghost. Now he's backslidden right now, but the Bible says there's a season. And this man's season was to come here. And because I didn't arrest this man or get him arrested... He did thousands of dollars of work on probably the nastiest job that we've ever had here in the church. When our, we found out that our plumbing, or, or, or well I guess it's plumbing, was made out of clay. Old, old time clay and the roots had, had actually grown right into the clay. And we were trying, Roto-Rooter was even trying to do this snake thing and they couldn't even get their snake out. It was so bad. They were just digging straight into roots. It took them like three days to get his snake out of my, my plumbing. So what does he do? He goes in and he digs every, he had this experience as a plumber. He goes in and he's, he's wading through our excrement. Toilet paper and you know what else. Wading through it. Taking out the clay. Putting in PVC pipe. Now church, I could have done this. I, I, I could have helped do this and I would be willing to do whatever it takes to help this church including way through that mess technically your mess but God is creating a body and he sends people to do these things I didn't have to do one single thing and we haven't had a problem with that since dug it all out put in PVC pipe put the concrete bat on put the concrete bat on the sidewalk now we have drains that we can do it from the outside right through and we don't have to worry about it. And we haven't had any problem at all. Because God is creating a body. Now this is where it relates to you. Because see John's not the only one here who has something to do for the church. Every one of you, every one of you has something that God wants you to do to become a part of the body. Even if you haven't been here for a while. God has a job for you in this body. For you. For you. Well, you are doing your job. She's, doing, she's got a job. You guys are newer. God's got a job for you. Because see, he saved your soul. This whole family just recently got baptized, got the Holy Ghost. This whole, this whole, this is his family. And, and, and 
God delivered you from these things and, and has blessed your family. But see, he wants you to serve him. And see, what most people want to do is they want to come to church and take up a seat. And they want to hear the preaching and they want to, they want to receive encouragement. And they want to receive instruction. And they want help through the trials and the tribulation. But when it comes time to give back to God, all of a sudden we become stagnant. Understand. Understand. God does want you to do something for him. One of the things that we're trying to create in this church, and this is one, one of the reasons why I did what I did. We just got that van donated. And I can very easily, because the man had already committed to us to give us the van. To drive from Phoenix to bring it to us. Didn't ask for gas money. He wanted to visit our church. He wanted to check us out, see what we're doing. And he wanted to bring the van. Didn't, didn't want a dime. But left here with $1,000. Because I led the way in saying, I'm going to take this money that's mine, and I want you to match it, and you did. Because we're trying to create givers in this place, and not just takers. Too many churches are full of takers. Give me the word, pastor. Give me encouragement. Give me strength. And when God says, give me, well, wait, 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 wait. I, I didn't sign up for that. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because that's what God wants from us. He wants us to become a body and the body has different parts with different functions. I don't try to smell with my feet. And I certainly don't smell my feet. But I don't go up to a flower and go, wow, that smells pretty good. Because that's not the job of my feet. My feet are to take me places. Now I don't go, I used to be able when I was younger, I could walk up my hands from here all the way over there, maybe outside. But that's not what these are designed for. I certainly can't do that now. <laughs> I used to be able to get up to a, like a, an edge, if it was higher, like maybe on the baptismal, and I could just put my hands up. I could raise my body up with my hands. Because my back was real strong. There's a lot of jelly here now. It's really embarrassing. I, I grow up I was just like, oh really? 45 and and see that was that was when I was you know young and strong and played football and all those played soccer and I was strong. So I, I, but these are made for walking. As a matter of fact, there was a man who was actually born uh, with no lower extremities and, and, and he had to walk on his hand. He began to develop all kinds of problems all over his body because your body's not design, designed to walk on his hands. So, there's a job for you that's not for me. I can't follow you around to all the people that you encounter and witness to them because I'm not there. I can only follow my life. I'm not following all of you. It's your job to reach out to people when you get out in this community. I reach out to who I can. I mean, I've got one life. And, and is there one life to live? Isn't that a soap opera or something? I got one life to live. I used to watch that when I was young, believe it or not. I watched General Hospital. Is it still on? Then yeah. how do you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> Watching these dramas. <laughs> but I can't, I can't do what God has designed for you to do. You know why we're not at 170 right now? Is, can, I, can I preach or are you going to get mad at me? Can I be the pastor? Can I give instruction without, can I step on toes without y'all saying ouch? The reason why we are not where we should be, and believe me, I'm grateful to have a, you know, we have a lot of people here. And on, on Sundays, we have a lot of people, and we got a lot of people doing a lot of things. But we should be running 175 right now. We should have so many people that we got to put chairs in the hallway and open up the doors so they can watch from out there. We should have to put a screen in the fellowship hall because we don't have any room left in here because they got to be in there because they can't, but, they, they, but they're not going to not come. The reason why that is not the case is because you and the people before you have not done your jobs. Oh, it done got quiet now. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I understand how the process works. It takes time to grow a foundation. It takes time. The problem with this church, I'm going to just, can I preach? I'm going to tell you the problem with this church is I probably built six foundations 
in the past five and a half years. And there are so many people that come in and allow themselves to be drawn away by the lust of the flesh. We've had 250 plus people be baptized in the last five and a half years. 240 some people get the Holy Ghost. We should have at least half of that in the church. At least. So we're talking about 130 we should have. But we're running 70. It's because we've had to keep rebuilding the foundation over and over again. Now the great thing is we've got some things that are sticking. It's taking time. And, and believe me, this is actually normal. But guess what? I don't want normal. I want extraordinary. I mean, we have extraordinary, but I want even more extraordinary because my God is an extraordinary God. I have high expectations because I know that God is able. God is able. It's not me that does it, and it's not you necessarily until we surrender to God, and he does it through us. I didn't build this church. God built this church. But God needed a vessel to enter in with a big mouth to go out and grab everybody he can and teach as much, as much as he can to build these foundations to build the church. Now, we've got a good 40, 40 people that are solid. And we've got a good 40 people that come and go on a regular basis. What God is looking for is for us to engage him with intimacy so that there is not going to be a separation. My wife and I love each other. We have fights, don't get me wrong. I mean, you didn't name me a marriage that doesn't. You guys ever fight? <laughs> you need to repent, brother. <laughs> but you know what's wonderful? Is that my wife and I love each other too. We have an intimacy with each other. We have this belief and vision where our lives are joined for a greater purpose. And so those things don't tear us apart. We had a fight on Friday, we ignored it on Saturday, discussed it on Sunday, and boom, everything's beautiful. You know, when we have issues in our lives, we need to stay in the body. Because what we do is we decide to go outside of the body for our answers. And the enemy is just sitting there waiting to tell you all that you want to hear, all the flesh wants to hear, to give you an excuse to be outside the body. Now this is a natural thing we understand. The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. We know how the enemy works. But knowing is only half the battle. And as I coach football, you know, we have the, I love doing football analogies. We have film and we're able to watch film on the other team. We're able to, 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 to turn.